Taco Bell, Chipotle, and in and out ranked amongst the three healthiest uh, fast food places. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I know the MSM venue is literally right next to a Chick-fil-A and nothing else, which is a vegan's nightmare. In and out. Oh, in and out. There you is an in and out. That's right. Oh, you, can I... order, you can order, uh, what is it, grilled cheese? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I think that's a recent development as well, just because of vegan mm -hmm. influx in SoCal. But. Now, if you're gluten-free, man, that's, that's asking too much. <laughs> that, that's where things begin to get like, all right, man, hold up. I can't, we can't have everything for you. Man, regardless of food choice affiliation, you know, we will see Silver Fox and Tater Eater. From gluten-free and Silver Fox looking, hoping that he isn't made to look free in this particular matchup. I like it. I like it. Bit of a stretch, but yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll make it work, man. We'll, we'll go with it. it. Yeah. Silver Fox with an early disadvantage already down 25%, but these low percent Squirtle combos can make it back if you're just above 80 or below 80%. Yeah. Usually, in my in my experience playing against Squirtle, I usually try to like I don't know how to fight Squirtle, so I really have nothing like to do it. But usually, when you feel enough damage between anywhere between 30 to 50 percent, your opponent should be switching off a of Squirtle because of his weight. I feel the same way, just as a Wolf main, just praying that your opponent just go with the blasters, hope they hit, hope they don't low profile under them. As soon as you know. As soon as they do make the switch to Ivy Sword, just it becomes much more doable, right? Thank whatever God that your religion <laughs> says. Yeah, like it's, it, it becomes much more doable because like within 30 to 50 percent, like that squirrel is a little bit more active. After that, they're like, all right, hold the phone. Oh, but he got the down air spike right as he was returning to the ledge, mm -hmm. and Tainerinator is already going to be out of that first dock just a minute in. And look at the range of up air and vine whip. Tainerinator feeling the wrath of everything in Ivysaur's kit at the moment. Nice, gonna do some down tilt there. I don't, I mean, despite like tweets being made by some top players, I do think is still very viable, still a very good character, not as strong as he used to be pre patch, mm -hmm. but still like the one thing you do have is like a great mid-range plan, disjoints, you still have Razor Leaf, right? That's what is pretty much Link Boomerang without the return. Right. I know Clown Cart does have some armor on startup, so Silver Fox might just want another plan rather than going for Razor Leafs offstage, but... That was a great empty hop here. Gets him into the First off, gone, and then some. Taternator finally on the board here. Nah, won't kill. He's got the weight to him and the damage there with Charizard. That's usually why you sometimes see Pokemon trainers go for Charizard, just because the damage output is much bigger as a heavyweight. Right, rather than as it was a Squirtle. You usually want to stay sort of for the, com the early combo game, and then when it comes to edge guarding, Ryan, you want to kind of like transition between having Squirtle or Ivysaur. Whips with the waterfall though, and just has to go back to down tilt market to get anything started. Already seeing this Ivysaur come out, with which he had so much more success with him that first stop. And I haven't seen this matchup too much, but I have to imagine that Ivysaur is potentially the most deadly of the three in this particular matchup, at least pre-patch. Post-patch might have changed a couple of things, but... Yeah. It still looks like, you know, it's slightly more in Ivysaur's favor, like we talked about earlier, having a great projectile with Razor Leaf, mm -hmm. having that spacing with, you know, a lot of the, the vine. Having the ability to juggle with up airs and vine whips, too. Yeah. Edge guarding is much better with Ivysaur than it would be if it was Squirtle, so like he still has the tools. Right. So to say, it's just not as great as it used to be. Alright, we're using a Nair. It's the second time for Tanner to understand. Okay, he's been coming back from ledge with Nair. I need to start adjusting to that 120% of Tanner's. The silver is 0%. That's not gonna kill here, but he does get a lot of stage control here, and it's gonna to come back on Super Triple Land. Good Mecha Koopa to buy himself time! Yeah, it latched on at the right time. He just floated onto the stage and then back to the Ooh. ledge. Even manages to delay that second aerial, accounting for the switch too. Oh, Tater making the slow comeback here. 75%. This is just one edge guard away here for Tater too. He gets it right, 152 here. His own Mecha Koopa gonna latch onto him, but throws it back. Yeah, resets the timer with the grab. Mm -hmm. Like that, approaching slowly with shield. He wants to make sure he can try to react to something. Silver Fox has a lot to lose here, but he finally lands there with the forward air that's spacing. Not there, but the raw damage here will be the one thing to take it away. Mm -hmm. A bit of a war of attrition in that first game. Silver Fox just got an early lead with the down air and perhaps rode that momentum wave till the very end. Yeah, he did. 
I think it was just running out of everything in the tank and threw out a few options, but one of them eventually did work, and these are these were calculated, so yeah. even after getting a bit desperate, didn't abandon his setups, and he's going to be rewarded for that game one. Yeah, and Tater still, like, he was making the slow comeback. He kind of knew, like, okay, a lot of this lead comes from that downer he got earlier on. Mm -hmm. So it's good to just keep composed and understand, like, okay, this is what I need to do. Like, okay. No doubt it's going to be the same venue for game two. Back to PS2, the home stage advantage for Silver Fox. Usually, uh, the new, the new uh, what we would call the new natural for sure. Right. At least the gentleman pick after all. Yeah. We used to call it Stardutville back in the day. I, I, there's no way to just call Pokemon Stadium Pokemon Starter, but hey man, it's a good stage that works. Being a pie plot. And I like these this use of up special out of shield. It's not something you see as a typical tool with Squirtle, but the waterfall can do something, especially if Squirtle Shield is attacked. Mm -hmm. Silver Fox slowly delays that forward air, just trying to buy himself some time for shield pressure. Here comes out. Wendy is going to have something. That lingering forward smash might have just discouraged a quick out of the option from Silver Fox. So if he can just discourage certain timings. That hitbox, and I don't even know if it was the extension from the side feature, because that was some crazy shenanigans there. It was nerfed uh, a couple patches ago, but man, just to see it's still active. Only brings free earn to the unready. Good parry. And good use of force smash. A little bit of a charge back too. He's just waiting with the down air, just a bit mistimed, but gets him into the forward throw and that razor leaf might not interrupt the clown card because as I said it does have a bit of armor on startup. Yeah, razor leaf is good to actually like kind of pressure Tater to not go through the side beast. It's kinda of one of these one of those moves that stops him from going for that. Mm -hmm. Missing the grab on the next Kuba. He sets the timer though and gets the up smash as well. Taternator 166% down, but. I was gonna say that's a choice. I'm gonna grab the way from I didn't even get to finish my sentence. He was just already gone. <laughs> that's what we see like Charizard, like when he's, as soon as he sees Tater like above that 120% threshold, he's like, all right, man, Charizard, you take the, take the wheel and drive. Right off of the Angel platform and just got that immediate reversal. This time the waterfall out of shield not gonna do anything. Tater only too risky too, especially in the shield, the fact that the Tater had already landed. You only got a soft punch for that. Oh, they're off stage. There's that one razor leaf. Oh, he was ready to catch that side with the other. <laughs> oh, I respect that Silver Fox didn't expect the rub uh, the wipe out, so he wanted to see uh, possible out of shield option. Again, he was trying to go for the up air to catch it off the side B, but just a bit too low himself. Nice. I like the fact that he's not too open to us to try to come back on the stage, but unfortunately, the tether, the slow reach around and grab there is going to be the one thing that kind of caused him to get hit by the cannonball. Interesting. I think just, I was questioning what Tater was doing with a few cannonball setups when Ivysaur was present, just knowing that he could pressure him back with a Razor Leaf, but it looks like that particular situation was what he was going for the entire time, and it finally worked out there. He sets the timer again, lands with an air. And that rapid jump is going to hit both Squirtle oh, and Ivysaur. Down there, slowly stopping Solar Fox coming back on the stage. Got a smash here. So Fox, 67% on a switch to Squirtle. This is pretty much a, a two Squirtle combos away, honestly, from making the slow comeback. I think I managed to land the game. Starts off here with that forward and 35. I talked about it, right? Just two combos away. The next one here would have been the one thing to tie up the socks in terms of percent. Fair into Sour Spot, Fine Whip. This team is game to lose here. He kind of slowly took back momentum here against Super Fox. Rolls behind, but just didn't get an option in time. Could have gone for the grab. Yeah, he could have. He also like stopped himself from going for a speed forward there too. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I think he wanted to have a shield option there. I think he just wanted to delay in time enough for the Mecha Koopa to latch on, but Silver was able to just get out of that right before it started. Yeah, space forward there. He's kind of respecting the Mecha Koopa too because he sees how close Dater is around it. Oh, that's a confirm that it's up and not it just yet. Did manage to get the catch and oh. the forward are going to take it. Wendy. He's going to do it for Taternator, and we have a game three. Yeah, Silver Fox so close. So close, and yet so far. Two players here, man. Almost taking out some probably some big names here. Mm -hmm. Taylor and Chad. 
feeling the wrath of game three. Yeah, I don't think Tater was expecting to face a game three this earlier in the bracket, but no, no opponent is to be taken lightly at Wednesday Night Fights. Yeah, especially when it's main stage weekend. Right. Uh, coming out the Woodrick, man, the SoCal unranked. It's just when you think you were ranked, you're safe, right? You don't worry about losing to some, some guy with a terrible name, and you come to a local, and that's where they're waiting for you. Well, that's where they get you. Hey, Mecha Koopa not going to save him from that early Squirtle combo. able to register 2%. Just goes forward, gets the fair to throw him off stage, but Tater reverses his momentum well with the side B. So the fair wanted the vine with as well, that might have killed at this percent. Come on, Ferris. Let's go come back here, especially keeping Ivysaur off the stage. Other space forward air. Great opportunity to reduce the Soul Fox, demonstrate how important the spacing is to. Yeah, and as we saw right there, the Mecha Koopa was occupying the same space, but it does take a few sec a few milliseconds of startup just for that something for the Mecha Koopa to even latch on, even if you're directly standing where he's at. That second attempt of an up air was... I respect it because he probably would have seen Tater's kind of shield option there, but I mean, he had no reason to try to go for shield. Right. Charizard, he wants extra weight, but also damage output here to take, take care of Wendy. Back to Jeff putting him up towards the top, drops the Mecha Koopa, and... Oh, it looked like he wanted to pick it up, too. Switch the up smash down, up throw, yep, on top of the platform. That's going to be the first stock on with a bit of rage as well for Silver. Makes the immediate switch back to Squirtle, so he's going to be very light in that up air. I have to imagine <laughs> it might have not have done it for Charizard if he was out. Yeah, the one thing, too, to know that Squirtle's like a top five like character, not just character in the game. Mm -hmm. So, like, that, that's why I'm like, you're right, Charizard probably would have been the much better pick to stay in. Right. Very nice, good use of down tilt there, using a little bit of range. Silver Fox slowly coming back here. I do see Tater using that movement though, trying to get it around. I feel like that's what Tater's combat here has been against like a Squirtle and Ivysaur, is having that extra movement. Just on with the Mega Koopa though, and gets consecutive fares to pop him oh, up. My man, you might want to switch out here. Squirtle looking like not the play. He's looking like combo meat at the moment. Exactly. All right. A little shield there. I mean, Silver Fox, if he's feeling confident here, I don't want to destroy his confidence. Only he would know what to do in this situation rather than me. Being patient. A bit too early with the down air, but not too far off. Oh, the combo off the Mecha Koopa, man. If that was something to be taken care of. Delayed his recovery to not get caught by the lingering F smash. He's been missing those downers, and I don't know if it's a confidence thing, but if I were, like, if I were him, I'd probably say, okay, I'm missing downers. Let me stick to something that works like on stage play here. I mean, it worked in game one, mm -hmm. and it just hasn't worked since. Yeah. Missed timing. Oh, no tech. And it could be difficult to take because you do get hit by the clown card itself, then the explosion. I think that was on the very edge of untackable there. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the red splash, unfortunately. <laughs> And the one wearing glasses. Which is back to Squirtle, and again, that's going to be useful for low percents, but his fall speed is just going to play to his disadvantage here. He uses the neutral air dodge. Yeah, you don't receive M lag as much from neutral air dodge rather than directional air dodge. Mm -hmm. Important to note that. You also receive uh, more end lag from upwards air dodge than from sideways and downwards, respectively. Yeah. If I and look, if I were Silver Fox, man, this is the game to lose and the set to definitely probably harm Tater. Making the switch here to Ivasaur might be the play. At 99%, Squirtle might have died from an early attack there, so mm -hmm. did well to make the switch. And at 113, Ivysaur might not be providing the same weight he needs to. Yeah. I mean, the one thing about being in Charizard 2 is that you do make yourself a bigger hurt box, but having that extra weight might be the one thing you need to, especially with that extra power. Silver Fox unable to land or have a second or a moment to himself. Let's cross the back air. I almost risky. Interesting. He parried the first hit of the up smash and the rapid That's jab. It. Yep. That's it. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> sigh of relief. Yeah. yeah, sigh of relief from Terry. He was like, yo, man, I'm not going out early today. Silver Fox, though, not that far off. Not that far off. Let's face back air. It was definitely so close. 
to being punished. Yeah, one of the best of SoCal's own rank, really brought to the brink there, but is going to be moving on. I believe that's going to be into Winterside Top 16, so yeah, good stuff for him. We do have, so far in terms of like Pokemon trainers, we do have Sweet Heat, uh -huh. Spanky, Silver Fox, if I'm not mistaken, he lives in the Senkal region of SoCal. Spanky lives in the Inland Empire. 